In Lesson 5.1, students investigate how substances change when they are heated and cooled. Students see a sample of water being cooled till it freezes, and they see ice being warmed until it melts. Then students investigate the heating and cooling of butter. And in an animation, students see that heating causes molecules to move faster, and cooling causes molecules to move slower. Let's take a look. So you can first show students a time lapse video of water freezing. The time is sped up a tremendous amount to where what would take about eight hours to freeze outside on a cold day freezes in about 15 seconds. But you could tell students that on a very cold day, or if you put water in the freezer, the water molecules slow down so much that they eventually form a solid, which we call ice. Then you can show students a time-lapse video of ice melting. Here, again, it's sped up a tremendous amount, but it shows that adding energy or warming the ice causes it to melt. You can explain to students that heating ice causes the molecules to move faster, and eventually the ice melts. So students can do an investigation using butter. There really aren't that many substances that you can use in the classroom that you can melt easily and freeze easily. So students use butter. Butter is a solid at room temperature. Now, it's sort of a weird solid. You know, it's not really hard like a rock solid, but it's not a liquid either. And students put it in hot water to see what happens. So here you can take a small sample of butter and put it like in a hot water bath and then use a popsicle stick to move it around and expose it you know to as much of the heat as possible and this doesn't take too long you can use a smaller sample of butter and kids will see that the butter eventually begins to liquefy and it went from a solid to a liquid then you can take this liquefied butter and move it to cold water. Now, this cold water that we're going to put it in has had ice in it and is very cold. So we're going to move it into the cold water and again stir. And pretty quickly, the liquefied butter begins to stiffen. And kids will see that it collects on the popsicle stick and it's starting to harden and it gets more difficult to stir, and it's sort of gone back to the way it was before when they started as solid butter. The whole idea of this investigation is to show that heating and cooling can make a solid turn to liquid and make a liquid turn to a solid. And you can show an animation to help students understand what's happening on the molecular level. So here is some butter in a cup. We're going to take a look all the way down to the molecular level what the butter looks like. And it's a molecule that's kind of long and thin. It's made up of carbons and hydrogens and a couple of oxygens on the end. But for second graders, we're just going to treat it as a squiggly line, a simplified version or a model of the butter molecule. As you put the butter in hot water and it begins to melt, what's happening to the butter molecules is that they begin to move and as they get warmer and warmer they begin to move faster and faster and they move further apart and the solid butter turns to liquid. So then if you take that liquid butter and put it into cold water those molecules have slowed down as they were in the cold water and gotten closer together and kind of congealed again and associate closely with one another and become a solid. You can show students a time-lapse video of ice cream melting with the idea that if ice cream is left out, it warms, its molecules move faster, and it changes from a solid to a liquid. Now, that same ice cream could be refrozen but some of the qualities of it that make it nice as ice cream would be lost. You can talk about how when they make ice cream, it's churned and air is added to it and it's nice and fluffy, but 
if you refreeze melted ice cream, that air isn't in it, and it's a lot more dense and crystally and not as good. For NGSS Standard 2 PS14, construct an argument from evidence that some changes caused by heating and cooling can be reversed and some cannot, well Lesson 5.1 deals with the first component of the standard, that some changes caused by heating and cooling can be reversed. Because students see that liquid water can be cooled until it freezes, that ice can be warmed until it melts back to a liquid, they also do the investigation with butter and see that the changes in butter of melting and refreezing can be reversed. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, students do an investigation where they put the butter in hot water and see that it goes from a solid to a liquid, and then put it in cold water where they see it goes from a liquid to a solid. And their evidence is based on their observations of what they see. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, students see that heating or cooling a substance can cause a change, not only in the time-lapse videos, but in the experiment they do. And they'll see that, in this case, all the changes they see in Lesson 5.1 are reversible. The ones they look at in 5.2 are not. For cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, students see that, on the molecular level, the cause for the butter melting is that the molecules move faster and get a little further apart and move past each other. And students do a simple test to see that heating and cooling cause changes in matter, in this case butter, that are reversible. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.